Good morning once again and welcome to My Conversation. My name is Jason Hurst and welcome to a brand new day of Sunday being our day for My Conversation and a new time slot too. So glad you are here checking us out. And uh, my day job during the week is Monday through Friday on Soft Rock 98.9, but it's great to come here and spend time and, and meet people all across the valley with businesses, entrepreneurs, and also from Aspect Ministries, we've got Michael Bogart, who's actually a sponsor of the show, My Conversation. Great to see you, Jason. Hey, thanks for coming on in. I know you're usually talking to Feather, so I'm just glad we get to sit down and talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And you get to share with us exactly what uh, October and how special this month is to you and what you want to say about it. Well, yeah, you know, October, this October, of course, today being October 1st, this is the 500th anniversary of something that historians call the Protestant Reformation. Okay. The time when the Protestant churches like the Anglican Church and the Lutheran Church and the Presbyterian Church and other groups like that split off from Roman Catholicism. Wow. And it started in October of 1517. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. For a resource like this, if people want to get a hold of you and actually find out what you talk about other than this stuff, how do they get a hold of you? Aspectministries.com. So you can send me an email of, at Mike, M-I-K-E, at Aspectministries.com. Or you can go to our website, Aspectministries.com, and see what we have to offer there. Because, you know, I got a friend, uh, my buddy Kevin, he talks about the Reformation all the time. I know the Bible. I read it through once, and I'm fascinated by it. I believe it. Uh, but also this Reformation thing, I hear a little bit about it. Go a little bit more in depth about what it's exactly about. Well, over the next, my plan is on this show, over the next five weeks, we're going to talk about issues that are relevant today from the Protestant Reformation. And today I really wanted to focus on why the Reformation even started. I mean, why did they need feel the need to split off from the Roman Catholic Church? And, and it, I guess if I was going to sum it up into one little phrase, it's abuse of authority. Okay that during the Middle Ages, the Roman Catholic Church had gotten kind of sloppy. They'd gotten kind of off task, at least from a Protestant perspective, and, and very lax in a lot of their practices. And this became a growing issue. And, you know, abuse of authority was a, was a big, big deal. And, for example, the, the Pope during Martin Luther's time, early Martin Luther's time, was Pope Leo X. Okay. And he was known for actually bankrupting the Vatican. You know, it was that bad. And so uh, this, this idea of the abuse of, of, of power, uh, an example of that was that many of the clergy were not trained. You know, the, the, the priests were not trained. They, they were kind of not connected to the real needs of people sometimes. And I, I want to say that there, there were probably a lot of good clergy back then. But also some Im examples of immoral clergy and immoral bishops and so forth. Not, not all of them, but some. And just a, a general laxness in the way that things were being handled. And many people with the increasing ability to read, more and more people could read during the late Middle Ages and the early Renaissance, which is the 14 and 1500s. They had access to the Bible and they could say, well, wait a minute, here's what the Bible says. Here's what we're seeing. Yeah. Something's got to change. And so the idea at first was to reform the church, to, to get the church to clean up its act. Right. And when that became resisted very heavily then the idea was to split off and, and form a new kind of Christianity based more on the Bible. How do you think it's working now, the system? <laughs> well, 500 years later, we've got some of the same problems even in Protestantism. Right. I mean, Protestantism, you've got some great churches and you've got some churches that are maybe not a, the greatest example. Right. And so we face some of the very same issues today. Right yeah. on. Uh, how can you go about selecting the right place to go and, and uh, express your uh, worship and faith? Well, obviously, I mean, I'm talking as an evangelical. Okay. okay. So to me, a church that preaches the Bible as it is, uh, you know, without trying to tamper with it or anything like that, I, I think is a great place to start. Right. But even all of those churches are not necessarily the, the best place for any given individual. Right. You may want to check out what kinds of ministries they have, what kind of attitudes they have towards certain, you know, cultural issues that are, that are spoken about a lot today. So, but you can start with a good a church that really tries to teach the Bible authentically. Well, I think about that. Usually, a lot of times people attend there. They go for the music, the speaking, and of course, the people that attend there right there. How about the attitude overall? Isn't that important too? Oh yeah. If a church is friendly and welcoming to new people, that that says an awful lot. And what they do to make people welcome, like is there adequate parking? Uh, you know, it, it, if you're going to take your kids someplace, is it easy to figure out where your kids are going to go, and you feel safe leaving them there? Right. In other words, you know, you can you can assume that you are, you know, that you have what people want, but if you're not connected with people, 
then uh, and and understand their real needs, then maybe you're not really serving their interests. And, and I, think I think that was the problem with the Reformation. The humility and the humble attitude isn't that what the Pope's supposed to be all about? You know. Well, yeah, and and again, you know, I want to say the current Pope Francis seems to have a lot of humility in him. Okay. But back in the Middle Ages, the Pope was maybe the richest person in Europe. Right. That's and, why there's some changes that happen. Right. Exactly. And what exactly. Do you, how do you think it's going like right now, as far as the evangelical side of things? Well, you know, again, evangelicals, you've got your happy face and your not so happy face. You know, there's good and bad wherever you go. Um, but I would like to think that most evangelical people are trying really hard yeah. to, to walk the walk and to, to do what they've been called to do. There are some bad apples in the mix, but hey, that's going to be any place that you go. I think what I'm seeing right now, people are becoming more real of how we are as human beings. They don't try to paint that face on every Sunday because that's just really fake. And I think that's uh, really what the Reformation was all about was kind of break that mold. Yeah, it was getting Christianity into the hands of common people where they could authentically live it out in life. Okay. And, uh, and again, they, they made their mistakes back in those days. They weren't perfect, but that was the attempt is what they were trying to do. Okay, Michael Bogart. I keep wanting to call you a pastor, but you used to do that for many years. I, I right? used to, but now I have a Christian nonprofit and enjoying what I'm doing now. That's cool. Once again, how can people get a hold of you at Aspect Ministries? Well, uh, at Aspect Ministries, we are, um, it's aspectministries.com. There's a couple things. I'm going to put these books on special. Normally, they're the, my DVD, the 45-minute Bible, and the accompanying book, 45-minute Bible, they're usually $15 a piece. This month, they're going to be on special for $10 a piece. You can get them at aspectministries.com. And this book will get you into the Bible as an overview, right. as, an, as an introduction to the book. Uh, but it does it a, a pretty good job of it. I'm Fascinating. Very, very proud. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for coming on the show today. Thanks for being a sponsor of my conversation. Yeah, great, Jason. Good to see you. You too. And we'll be back right after this. Stick around.